Hey everyone, so let's take a look at how we can make a casting bar in a game and we're going to go into my game here, Portal Galaxy, just to take a quick look at an example of how this will look, what we're going to cover, and then I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so if I left click with the mouse, you can see there's a bar here and then a portal appears. Now it's happening very quickly, but the cool thing about this casting bar we're going to make is it is all going to be very, it's going to be percentage based. So if I, that means if I just change the appropriate setting here, uh, right now it's set to a quarter of a second. If I change this just to one second and then resume, if I hold, all of a sudden it's slower. And this is not an animation-based casting bar, meaning there's no animation events telling it when it should uh, cast a spell or create the object, whatever it is you want to do. Uh, it's all done through code. So this is how it looks. Now let's go take a look at how to actually code this. Okay, so I've set up a new scene here, and all I've done is I've copied over my slider from my game scene, and I have created a script called inputter thingy and attached a reference to the slider on it. Now, you don't have to call your script inputter thingy. In fact, I would highly recommend you come up with a much better name, but that's what I'm going with. So before we start looking at this, let's consider the conditions for success and failure forecasting. Now, in this case, the success condition is that we hold the mouse button down for the entire duration of the cast, and if we release the mouse button before we're done casting, the cast will fail. However, you could also look at uh, cast conditions like in World of Warcraft, where you're tapping a button like 1, 2, 3, or 4 on the keyboard with a mage, the cast begins, and you don't have to keep it held down, but if you move your character, the cast fails. Uh, different ways of doing it obviously but we're just going to use the mouse button has to be held down way so if that works for you great if not you can figure out how to modify the code let's get go ahead and open up this script and start off by creating a few variables so to get started we're going to need a few bools and we're going to call these cast request cast success with two s's and cast in progress we're going to need a public float called cast time, and we're going to need a private float called cast start time. Now here within the update statement is where we're going to get started with this code. And we're going to use, in this case, uh, coroutines and wait until statements to determine if the cast is successful or not. So to start off with, we are going to say simply if input dot get mouse button down so the mouse we just now this is going to be kind of contradictory because we could use get mouse button which would mean the mouse button has to be held down the entire time but i'm going to be using get mouse button down which means it's just going to register that first click and this should become a little more apparent why i'm doing it that way as we go through the code and we're going to say here start coroutine cast nope it's trying to reference my variable. Okay, you know what? Let's make let's write the method first, and then we'll come back, and it sh should stop autocorrecting. We're gonna make a private i enumerator. I can't spell, but that's okay. Auto complete, and we're gonna call this cast. And now we can go back up here and actually type in the method name without it trying to autocorrect on me. So within this variable or within this method, we're gonna do a few things. But first of all, we have one more if statement here to write, and we're gonna say, if there is no cast in progress, and this is because we're using coroutines and uh, wait until statements, and we don't want multiple casts to be requested at the same time, that will just make things messy. So there has to be no cast in progress, which means that we're gonna start off this method by writing cast in progress is equal to true, and at the opposite end, we're going to say cast in progress is equal to false once everything is over. And we're going to start off here by creating a hopeful method called request cast. It doesn't exist yet, but that's what we want to do. And then we are going to make a new yield statement. We're going to say yield return new wait until. And the way we do this is we start typing open bracket and then open bracket close bracket. And we're going to say, uh, wait, whoops, not wait until. And we're going to use a lambda. We're going to say equals greater, which makes a lambda. And we're going to say 
uh, cast request is equal to false. So basically, if this cast request is no longer being requested, then we can carry on with our method. Until then, do nothing. And now we can say here, if cast success, uh, we're just going to print out cast was successful and else the cast was not successful. So we'll just print that out too. Cast was not successful with one F. And this is basically our I enumerator, our coroutine. Let's move into the next step and code this statement, the request cast. So private void request cast. And in here, we are going to start off by saying uh, cast request is equal to true. Cast success is equal to false. What else do we need? We need to make uh, my slider dot value equal to zero. And we can actually just copy this line of code and put that at the end of our statement as well, just so it resets automatically. And then we are going to invoke a method, which we haven't written yet, and we're going to call it cast success. And we are going to invoke this method after uh, cast time. So basically, if the allotted cast time uh, goes by without uh, the fail condition hap happening, we are going to call it a success. Oh, and one more thing. We also had another variable here. We need uh, cast start time is going to be equal to time dot time. So the moment we press down the mouse button is going to be logged in this float variable. And we can also write this cast success method. And we're going to call this here private void cast success. And we're going to say that the cast request is now equal to false and the cast success is equal to true. So after one second, uh, our cast is successful, we are no longer casting, which means that this method here, uh, this condition has been met and we can carry on. But the fail condition, we have to write that still. So how is that going to work? So right now we know that we are casting, we are requesting a cast. And since we need this bar to progress every frame, we are going to do this here in the under update. We're going to say if cast request is currently going on, uh, we are going to progress slider. Let's go ahead and write that statement. Private void progress slider. And here we're going to have to declare a few new, a uh, couple of new float variables. We're going to say float time past is equal to, uh, this would be time dot time minus uh, cast start time. And then we're going to say float percent complete is equal to time past divided by cast time. So we said that we want this to be a percentage based uh, slider. So if we change our cast time variable up here, which by the way, we're just going to set default to one second. Uh, if we change that value, we don't have to change any of the other code. It's still going to work. It's still going to fill up the appropriate amount. And one more thing we have to do here, of course, is increase the slider value. My slider dot value is equal to percent complete. Uh, a note on this, make sure that your slider has a value between zero and one if we're doing it this way. So min value should be equal to zero, max value equal to one. Do that and you'll be good. So we're progressing the slider. And of course, now the last piece of the puzzle, we also need our fail condition. So we're going to write private void cast fail. Uh, in this case, we're going to say the cast request is equal to false. Cast success is equal to false. And also, uh, we need to cancel this invoke statement because we don't want to we don't want to invoke a success if we have failed. So we're going to cancel invoke cast success. And the last thing, why are we, because it got a capital C there. Why did that happen? Uh, under in the update statement, we need to do one more if statement. And basically what we want to do here is say, if, uh, if we're casting and if 
input.get mouse button up. So if we've now raised the mouse button, then we are going to uh, cast fail. So that should be everything, assuming we haven't made any mistakes here. Let's press save and test it out. Okay, so the moment of truth, we hold the mouse button down, start to progress, and it gets all the way. Cast was successful. Do it again. Cast was successful. We stop partway through. Cast was not successful. Would you look at that? It works. And as one final test, we also said uh, this variable should just be automatic. So let's make it a really long cast time. Two seconds. There we go. Two seconds. Cast was successful. Cast was successful. We can change it to whatever. Five seconds. It works. 0 0.5, really fast cast, and it works. So there we go. That's how we make an animated cast bar in Unity. If uh, you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comments. Hey guys, thanks very much for watching, and I hope you learned something useful in this tutorial. If you'd like to try our new game, Portal Galaxy, it is available for free for download on the Google Play Store. You can go to the link posted in the video description and try it out. And for the time being, we also have a promo code for this game that lets you get a few gems for free. So you can just go ahead and enter that too. If you have any questions, let me know. Post your questions in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.